Yes, come on, church, give faith with faithful life. Give Jesus some praise. Come on, hallelujah. Jesus has the victory. So that means you have the victory. Amen. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, welcome to the house of God. Tonight is your night. Tonight is Apostle Cindy's night. Tonight is Apostle Sloan's. Apostle Sloan's what? I thought y'all were going to keep on going, but y'all followed. That's good. Tonight is your night. Tonight is his night. Number one, amen. Night with you, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands tonight. Come on, church. I know some of you, if I ask you, you didn't do what I, well, you didn't do this. So we're going to ask the Lord for forgiveness today. It's never too late. The time that it was late was when I died. I didn't even have an opportunity to say, Lord, forgive me. This shall not be your story. It will never be your story or anybody that you have closeness with or that knows you will not be their story. Because God's going to use you to tell them, come on, let's pray. Come on, let's just say this. If somebody would have taken the time to do that with me, I would not have wound up in, in hell like I was. But nobody took the time to do that to me. And I'm going to do that time with you. Because as your headship, we're going to do this. And I will be here with you. So, Father, I ask you to forgive me for any thought, any word, any deed. If there's anything that I have done, any sin in my life that has been unpleasing in your eyes, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. Create in me a clean heart and a righteous spirit. I thank you, Lord, for washing me in your blood. I thank you, Father, that I will receive your word tonight. I am going to be transformed tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Satan, every plan, every assignment that you have against me or my family, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give Jesus some praise. I welcome all those that are joining us online. I believe you too did that with me. So welcome to the kingdom. Amen. You can go ahead and have a seat. Praise the Lord. I have a couple of announcements. And while I make your announcements, we're going to get ourselves ready for the seed. Amen. You never come to the house of God without a seed. Always be ready. Amen. Be ready. We have cash app. We already have the ways of sowing on on the screen they're going to get ready to go up we have credit cards in the back we have two so there's no excuse there's a there's a little chest in the front you can always do that but remember you never come to the house empty whether it's your tithe or your offering amen come on you're faithful how many of you are faithful unto the lord tithe or offering come on you've got to be faithful you expect jesus to be faithful he can knock on your heart and say are you faithful you can raise your hand here you can lie to me all you want but you'll never fool God. So don't sit here and raise your hand. And you all be lying. Say the truth. I'm not going to keep truth from you. It's your choice, remember? It's your choice, amen? You come to the house of God to learn. <laughs> and mama's going to teach you. Amen? I'm going to teach you. But praise the Lord, I have a couple of announcements. I want you to get yourself ready. I'm sure a lot of you already are ready. But a couple of announcements. This 18th, we have our women's group. Come on, Proverbs 31 women. How many Proverbs 31 women in the house? Amen. I'm the only one that raised hand. It's all right. How many Proverbs 31 women do we have up in the house? You don't know what a Proverbs 31 woman is. You better find it and you better call yourself that. Because I call myself that. I'm telling you. So listen, it's going to be the 18th. Come on, Tia, stand up. Just stand up. Give Pastor Tia a hand. Come on, she is awesome. And she handles that, and she does an amazing job. If you've not heard her speak, I want you to come to hear her speak. 
She is awesome. Thank you, beautiful. So I want you to make sure that you come. Gentlemen, send your wives or those that you may be courting. Notice I didn't say anything else. Bring them. Tell them you need to learn. <laughs> but I expect you to end up at the men's meeting. I'm telling you. Listen, I'm excited on the 18th, women. When you come, bring a dish to share. We break bread together. We worship with my beautiful daughters up here worshiping. We worship. We enter into the presence. We fellowship. We have a great time. Tia does an amazing, Pastor Tia does an amazing job. So please just come, ladies. It's on the 18th. We have it every third Tuesday of every month. You don't want to miss. It's just once a month. Now, the men is twice a month because they need it. We all need it. Craig, you're so honoring. <laughs> you're so truthful. It's true. You know. But, you know, we all need it. Amen? We all need it. Right, Zoe? I just had to do that because she smiled. And she just had a beautiful smile. So we all need it. So make sure you come. Guess what? Are you Speaking of Zoe, we have our lock-in. Thank you, Zoe. We have our youth lock-in. Give it up to my daughter, Sarah, who is doing a beautiful job with that. And let me tell you something. I'm going to tattle on myself. She has to give me a paper with all her notes because I forget. I remember everything. Amen. The 28th. Come on. We should be having a post. And look, look, y'all. It's right there. Look, lock in. 28th. Parents is a date night. Dun, dun, dun. If you have a youth, send them. 13 years old to 17, not 17 and a half or 18. It's 13 to 17. Well, I guess it would be all right. 13, 17 and a half before they're 18. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Sign up in the foyer. The sign up sheet is in the foyer. Okay. The waiver must be filled out by the end of this weekend. You have the end of this weekend, sweetheart. So this is the, the week that it needs to be filled out. So it needs to be filled out. Y'all, please make sure you get that. We need to know. We've already got quite a bit already signed up. Okay. The waiver is on Telegram and even on Facebook. If Listen, please pay attention, parents. Please hear me, hear me, hear me. If you are not a parent or a legal guardian, you cannot sign the waiver. No friends, no aunts, uncles, or grandparents. If they're not a legal guardian... You cannot sign the waiver. We're obedient, right? Do not do that. Their parents must sign, okay? The sign-up sheet has a list of things for the youth to bring. And I know, Sarah, they put it there, pillows, blankets. Not like they're really going to sleep, but some do sleep. So it's for the, the whole 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. They're going to have a party. I mean, my house became a whole stocking storage of all the stuff she's doing. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. So it's out here, so please make sure to sign up. Any questions, please talk to my beautiful daughter, Sarah Sloan. We got it? Yes, ma'am, we got it? Amen, amen. God is good. Okay, now, ushers, I want you ready up here in the front. We're getting ready for our seed. Guess who has the honor of doing the seed tonight? Well, as you can see, Apostle's not here right now. Y'all ready? I'm excited. I want you to pay attention because when you sow the seed, you're about to get some revelation. You ready? Whether you want to stand up. No, you know what? I want you to stand up. I don't want you to sit down because when you're going to get seed, as long as you're getting yourself ready, that shows me you're ready. And when you're ready, you're going to start that song off when I'm done and you're just, they're just going to sow seed. Okay? We're just going to get ourselves ready. Because I'm going to give you the word tonight as far as the seed. I have to be specific. Amen? Here we go. There's something about giving your first back to God that should remind you that he is actually is the reason that you have it to begin with anyway. Am I right? At the very beginning, God gave. He gave breath to the beasts, sun to the plants, plants to the land, stars to the sky, Man to woman, woman to man. Though we sinned and selfishly overindulged in his creation, he gave again. He gave us a way back to him through sacrifice, but that wasn't enough for our giving God. He then gave a 
perfect relationship with his perfect son so he could give us life forever with him. When Jesus came, he gave his words, his wisdom, his ways, even his life. When he left, he promised another gift, the Holy Spirit. Today, the Holy Spirit gives his gifts generously to all believers. Amen. Giving is what God does because giving is who God is. Who are you? Think about it. This entire way of life, this following Jesus, it's for giving and by giving. Our faith is in a God who gives up his rights for our rights. Who gives up his ways of life to make a way for our lives. Given is what God does because given is who God is. Our only rational response is to give our lives, our time, our resources, our services, our affections, our attention back to him, our tithing, our offering. Come on. One small thing we return to God is the first portion of our income. He doesn't ask you for 90%, Carlos, Tia. He asks you for how much? 10% of $100 is $10. God is not selfish. He does not say, well, let me keep the 90 and you keep the 10. Come on. The Bible calls it a tithe, which means a tenth. God is our provider and we return this small gift back to his church. Jesus didn't make a big deal out of it, likely because it was a culture given. Besides, he didn't just ask the disciples for a tenth of their income. He asked them to lay down their nets, their entire source of income, and follow him. But Jesus did remind us not to neglect the tithe in Matthew 23, 23. In the same verse, he also reminds us not to forget justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Again, Jesus wants our whole life. Are you willing? Look what it says. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have not have done. You ought to have done. I'm telling you, God, God started giving at the beginning and the tithe is all about the beginnings. It's the beginning of your income. It's the beginning of your generosity. It's the first dime in a dollar. It's given at the beginning of your budget period. It's a new seed you plant that's the beginning of a powerful work through the church. Tithing is just the beginning. Generosity is not something we do once or twice a month. You were made in God's image and remade by Christ. Giving is what we do. Yes, this is what we do. But it's because generous is who we are. As you begin to sow tonight, I believe that you'll see a few things happen, church. I believe that one of the first things is that you'll begin to see God be faithful and bless you in return for your giving and your sowing into the kingdom. This isn't a give to get situation. It's just what happens when you are faithful. Simple. You are faithful. Nobody has to tell you. Parents, when you teach your children, such a shame that your children have to teach you. You taught them you should never neglect the things of God. Always remember that tithing is a commitment unto you and God. It's a promise that you will continue to do it. God will provide. God will provide. 
because he says he would. When does he not provide? When you don't do your part. You close the doors. You close the windows. God opened the windows. God opens the windows. God said, I will pour out a blessing upon you that you will be unable to withstand. God will always do what God said he would do. Time to sow your seed tonight, church. To be faithful unto the Lord. So as tonight, as you're sowing, remember, you will always remain faithful into the things of God. Because God is faithful to, to you. He's a just God. So come on, let's sow our seed tonight. And get ourselves ready, Ashley. Take Amen. Back what come on, come on, give back. Come yes. Come to lose what's mine. Yes. Take back what belongs to me. Come in the darkness yes.
God, in the mighty name of Jesus, for your seed that is sown in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we thank you that they're in your system of giving. Thank you, Father God, for providing for them financially, mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out a blessing upon them that they will be unable to withstand in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak increase on every page in their life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we shout out, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Now, with no further ado, come on, let me call up Apostle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands to heaven? Glory to God. Yeah, just lift your hands, lift your hands. Father, we worship you tonight. By yes, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy, O oh God all that you've done and all that you're doing in our life how you preserve us how you keep us how you watch over us how you take care of us how you lead us and how you guide us master we ask you tonight that you minister life to us by your word and by your spirit oh god have your way in our hearts tonight god we open ourselves to you we ask your lord speak to us minister to us somebody say speak to me lord somebody say minister to me lord Somebody say, show me the way. Open the eyes of my understanding. I choose to see today. I choose to hear today. I choose to live today. And we give you all glory and honor, Master. Thank you for your holy presence. And it's moving in this place today. Father, heal, deliver, and set captive free, O oh God. Lord, take it to another level in their life today. Let them see your hand move in a mighty way, God. That that you have done in times past, we're grateful. But, oh God, we thank you that you do abundantly above all that we can ask or even think, God. And that that has already happened, we believe. But now, oh God, we believe for another realm, Lord. That that we haven't seen. Maybe that that we haven't heard in our life. But we shall see it. We shall have it, O oh God. We shall walk in it. Somebody shout amen. amen. We thank you for it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Are you ready tonight? Somebody, there was uh, three people, yeah? Two, two people. I want y'all to share your testimony. Amen. We kind of jumped on uh, real strong during the, uh, during the uh, um, anniversary. That's you, you want to come? I know. Yeah, come on, sister. You're here first. Let's go. Amen. Sarah, you're coming too. Somebody else is coming. Amen. Can I have a microphone? We need a microphone for the sister. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm next. I said, I'm next. I'm next. Amen. We got a microphone. Okay, sister, go ahead. What happened to you? Okay. Um, okay. Well, May uh, 5th of 2021, I had, you remember, Bell's palsy. I remember my face was paralyzed. And there was an incidental finding of a tumor in the third ventricle of my brain, and that brought fear. So I didn't get the scan that I was supposed to until June of this year, and it's not there. So praise God. And but they <laughs> hold on, you just you just breezed right over, <laughs> right over that it's not there. It's not there. Um, what what's not there? The tumor. The tumor that was there. There is not there. It, Okay, cause so, cause somebody just said what happened. What happened? You just breathe. They, yeah. they 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 said there was a tumor. Where was this tumor? And the third ventricle of the brain. Which, in the brain. Which it houses so, the. Um, so we have two like bathtubs in our brain. Okay. Right. And and then um, one of them builds the fluid. Going to medical school tonight. One of them builds the fluid and then it goes to the other mm. bathtub and then goes down to the spine. Mm. So I had a tumor right in the center of the brain, like. You can pinpoint it like right wow. there. And um, so if it would grow anything, um, I had a really small window to get to the hospital so they can do an operation, take it out, or I would die. Mm. So I, that's what I work for. I work for a neurosurgeon. So I see this every day. And then for it to attack my life, I was like, why me? What did I do? But It I, happened during the tent. She came up. Am I right? Yeah, well, during the tent, I had already received my miracle since day one. 
but I was scared to go look at it, right? Yeah. So when I went to get a CAT scan, they did a whole body one, and they found nodule in the lung, cyst in the kidneys, um, tumor in the ovaries, and uh, they would have to do surgery. So I went on the 28th, had my CT scan, got all that information, and then I went again the next Friday to the ER, and it was still there. So then we went to the tent, and this woman got here, my That's mom. Right here, the anniversary. Uh, uh, so uh, Apostle Cindy, I was under the tent, and there were so many people, and I was irked under the tent. And my mom said, all of y'all get out of there. And I went to worship in front, and God is a God of order. Amen. So if, if, if in the middle of my worship, he met my need, right? Amen. So beautifully, just it was like, I thought I was, I was like, yes, this is awesome. <laughs> and uh, never before, I didn't really, like, who's looking? I could care less. Come on. Okay, so then we called the, we called the front, yeah. and I I went up there and I was on fire and I could care less if you saw me, you didn't see me, I was screaming and I never before, I've been in this house for so long but I was never on fire. And, and um, so I was on fire and then dad started saying tumors are leaving bodies and I was like, yeah, that's me, that's me. And I got it and, um, but we weren't under a tent and when I was opening my eyes, it was like this silky tent and you're standing right there wow. and I'm just like receiving right and I just I couldn't even talk I was like shaking and but anyway I received my miracle I went Friday to get an ultrasound of the wow. of the cyst which is less than a CAT scan so they were in a probe and the lady's looking and looking and I'm looking up and I said what's that she's like your ovary I said well show me where the tumor is she said hold on She's, and she's digging and digging and digging. And I was like, ah, that hurts. She's like, hold on. I got to go call the doctor. Wow. Doctor comes in. He starts doing his thing. He's like, we can't see it. But hold on. I said, no, you felt it. And you told me that it was right there on my left side. And I, uh, you know, you told me, there it is. We got to take it out quickly. And I go, where is it at now? He said, I don't know. But it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> and, um. He wants me to do other tests. I'm gonna amuse them and I'm gonna take these tests and I'm gonna test it. But you know what they wouldn't do? They wouldn't give me a picture of my ovaries so I can show you. I said, well, you do it of babies? Why can't I have my picture? Oh, it's in the system because they still have to bill my insurance for this thing. And they Suspect. And they didn't find it. So where's my money back? Cause I was like, I paid you. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, where's, praise him where's tonight. Where's my money back? Because <laughs> I got my miracle here, not there. Amen. Come on, amen. <laughs> come amen. on, somebody bless the Lord. Praise him, amen. <laughs> <laughs> we command that money to come back to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, Sarah. Come on now. Oh. Um, so this week, we really saw God work in our life. Um, we saw a physical and financial miracle. Um, I did not wear makeup because I knew I was going to cry. Um, our sweet baby son uh, was born with like severe eye problems, and he's had glasses since he was about two years old. And um, we were seeing a specialist <laughs> um, because he continues to really struggle. And so... We went in there and the lady was doing all these tests on him. Um, she was actually testing our daughter thinking that it was um, genetic or something was wrong with our like generational line. Cause she was talking about degeneration and all these big words that we had never heard because we'd never seen an actual specialist for his eyes. And um, she was testing him and he has no depth perception. He has, she's telling me all these things and she's saying surgery, surgery. And so I text Daniel and I was like, can you just pray because they're already talking about surgery on his eyes and he's only five. Um, and so she's listing all these things that are still so are getting worse in his eyes. And so we wait 30 minutes to actually see the um, whatever the specialist eye doctor is. And within 30 minutes, we go back and she's like looking at his eyes. and She doesn't see anything that's wrong with him. <laughs> Amen. It just gets better and better. She starts looking and she's like, she's looking. I'm asking her about surgery and she's like, 
like, why are you asking about that? And I said, well, the other lady said that he might need it. She's like, I don't see any of that. So she pulls up this chart and she, she had listed it on there already that he was gonna need these procedures. And she's like, there's nothing here. He just needs a new prescription. So within 30 minutes, I know God just like healed his eye. So we go, we go to check out. And when I booked the appointment, they said our insurance with Daniel's job doesn't cover this, this specialist. So we were expecting to pay like $500 for the specialist, plus his, he has specialty glasses, so those were gonna be like four or $500 too. And so we get up there and the receptionist is checking us out and she brings another receptionist over and I'm like, oh Lord, just let it be in our bank account because obviously it's gonna be expensive if she's bringing somebody else over. And the lady goes, is this right? I'm typing in the right codes. Every, and she's like, yeah, that's right. That's the bill. $120 from $500. <laughs> so, and she's like, I've never seen this before, but that's, that's what it is. And so I go over to the optical table to order his glasses. And she's like running everything. I'm asking if we can use his old um, lenses because they're going to be so expensive. And she goes, well, what insurance do you have? And I said, I already talked to her. Our insurance doesn't cover. And she goes, well, this is a different department. So our insurance covered his entire glasses too. So we only paid $120 for the whole thing. $125 for the whole thing. Come on, Jesus. I think Jesus can get a higher of a praise. Ain't that? Come on, Amen. Come on, Jesus. Come on, yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Let God do it for you. Huh? Let God remove every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every financial yoke on your life. Let it be broken tonight. Let it be removed tonight. Let your heart receive from the Lord what the Lord has already done and desires to do for you. Mm. Come on, just lift your hands. Come on, just lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we thank you. You're a miracle-working God. It is in your nature, oh God. The miraculous is just who you are. And we thank you, oh Lord, that when your presence and your word comes upon our life, we receive your very nature, your very character of the supernatural, changing our story, changing our life, oh God. And surely we will continue to testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, oh God. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say it's my turn to testify. Turn to testify. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Galatians chapter 3. Glory to God. Y'all can be seated. Hallelujah. Give the worship to my hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Galatians 3.10. Glory to God. God has been speaking to my heart all week since we closed service last Sunday. And the word of the Lord has been strong coming into my spirit. Amen. And this is the word that he gave me. Redeemed. Somebody shout redeemed. redeemed. Somebody shout redeemed. 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 For as many as are of the works of the law. This is Galatians 3.10. For, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Somebody say under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Somebody say to do them, to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by, somebody faith. shall by faith. faith. Somebody say my life. It's a lifestyle of faith. That's why it doesn't look normal. I said, that's why it doesn't look normal. Your life will never look normal. Because your life is a life of faith. Amen. You'll shout when everybody else is crying. You'll laugh when everybody else is sad. Because your life is a life of faith. 
Oh, I feel God doing something for you tonight. Those of you that didn't get to testify this week, you will testify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the life is a life of faith. The just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith. But the man who does them shall live by them. What is the law? The law is the, the, the first five books of the Bible. When it gives you the Levitical law or the law in how you should live your life. Amen. Nobody could live that out. Nobody was perfect in that. Except somebody shout his name. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus fulfilled all of the law. Somebody say he fulfilled all of the law. Amen. I'm, I'm talking about the demand from God for us to do things a certain way so that we would become righteous. Amen. Amen. Our righteousness is now found where? In Jesus Christ. Somebody say in Jesus. And through Jesus, I become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no one is justified by the law. That means the, the, in, in anything you're doing according to the Old Testament, as far as following the Levitical priesthood or the laws of, of doing different things, if you didn't wash your hands, you were in trouble. Hello? Uh -huh. Hello? Uh -huh. They came to Jesus and said, how come your people don't wash their hands? He said, why don't you wash your heart? Yeah. Hello? Hello. <laughs> Somebody said a clean heart. Makes clean hands. Ooh, somebody's catching something tonight. I said somebody's receiving something tonight. So the law is not of faith. Amen. It was, it was instructions that they were doing to procure or receive a, a righteousness from God. But God knew that nobody could do it except Jesus Christ. Amen. So, so it says that we live by faith. Somebody say by faith. Amen. Verse 13. Somebody say verse 13. verse 13. Because this is what we want to receive right here. Christ has redeemed us. Somebody say redeemed us. Redeemed. From what? From the curse of the law. When did this, this curse start? Is when Adam sinned. As soon as Adam sinned, the curse of the law. What was the first law given? Somebody say don't eat. <laughs> Somebody say don't touch that tree. That was the first commandment given, amen? Don't eat of this tree, amen? And when that commandment was broken, the curse of the law began, amen? And then the law, just like every nation, it gets more and more and more. Have you, have you ever read the law book in America? Hello, that's why people go to school for years and they still ain't figured it out. Why? Because every year they keep adding laws after laws after laws. So, you know, you broke a law just driving here. Hello, you didn't put your blinker. You broke a law. Huh? Hello? Now, those are natural laws. What about mm -hmm, uh, laws from God? How many laws were broken of God this morning since you woke up? <laughs> Somebody said thank you for the blood. How many laws just because you rolled over in bed too many times? <laughs> Hey, don't, don't look around. You know? he said, I told you to get up this morning. <laughs> and you rolled over. You, you broke the law. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody say, help us, Lord. <laughs> so that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. Somebody say, no one is justified by the law in the sight of God. He said, it is evident that no one. That's why he said, the just shall live by faith. Where is our faith today? Our faith is in Christ Jesus. Somebody say Christ Jesus. Now watch this. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How? By becoming that very thing called the curse. Amen? 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 So Jesus became the curse to break the curse. Somebody say the curse. Somebody say the curse of the law. Uh, the curse of the law was broken. Somebody say it was broken. And it was broken by Jesus Christ. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. You see, we have to recognize these things so we know what is done for us. One of the reasons we struggle in life, even as a believer, is because we don't know what was paid. We really don't know the depth 
of the payment that God made for us. Eh? So we cheapen our life by allowing the enemy to lie to us. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I said we cheapen our life, we cheapen our walk, we cheapen our relationship, we cheapen our outlook because we don't really know the price that was paid. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we say, yes, Jesus paid the price, but we don't know the value of what was really paid. Somebody say new value, <laughs> new evaluation of my heart, of my mind, about the word of God. Hallelujah. So, now, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Somebody say, through faith. Right. So, you, 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 you know, you have to understand that everything that you have that comes from God is received by faith. Amen? It is received by faith. Somebody say, by faith. Somebody say, my faith is alive. I don't have dead faith. I have living faith. My faith breathes. My faith speaks. My faith moves. And my faith in the word of God causes God to act on his word. Oh, God. See, God wants to act on his word, but he needs your faith. Huh? But we don't have faith in what we don't know. Somebody say, what we don't know is what really destroys us. This is why people will go around in a cycle of life, eh? They told you what? That it was a generational thing. They wanted to see it in your children. Guess what? God broke that. I said, the Lord broke that. By crucifying his only begotten son, he broke down generational curses. Amen. Some of you need to say the curse stops with me. I said the curse stops with me. It won't transfer. It has no power to go through. Uh, because we're not in this world. Hey, we're from another realm. And that curse can't enter that realm. I said it can't enter that realm. You see, this is what makes us crazy. In the eyes of unbelievers or even Christians who don't believe. Because they don't understand spiritual things. Somebody say, I understand spiritual things. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, some people just in offering got nervous. Because they don't understand they put something in another realm. They don't know when they handed it over to the Lord, it actually went into the realm of the spirit. It actually went into a heavenly bank account that has your name on it. Because not only does the Lamb's book of life have your name because you're born again. There is a treasure stored up in heaven that has your name on it. Hallelujah. See, I don't know where Christians stop being spiritual. Somebody say, no, no more in my life. Uh, even, even salvation is spiritual. Hello. Hey, what did they tell you? You make Jesus the Lord of your life. You'll make heaven. Is heaven not a spiritual place? Yes. Hello? So then everything about Christianity should be spiritual realities. Yes, not carnal understanding. Somebody say my story is different. Somebody say I understand spiritual things. Even if I just take it today by faith. But by faith. I take it by faith that I have spiritual concepts. Spiritual understanding. My heart says I believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not carnal. Hello. What Jesus did for us was not carnal. When he hung on that cross, it was supernatural. When he died and went to hell, it was supernatural. When he rose on the third day, it was supernatural. And everybody's still looking for his grave. You won't find it because he's alive. Somebody say he's alive. That means our faith should be alive. That means in whom we believe is alive. And that means what we believe is alive. Somebody shout it's alive. Somebody say I'm alive. My relationship with God is alive. It's not a dead religious thing. It's not a church membership thing. It's an encounter with God. It's an encounter with the word of God. It's taking your faith and touching the realms of glory and something manifesting in your life.
Somebody say hallelujah. 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 I pray for all of us here and those watching wherever you're watching. That the carnality of Christianity is over in your life. Somebody said that's my story. Somebody say it's over in my life. It says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Just to receive a blessing from a man that died. How can you get it? <laughs> Unless you have faith and the transaction is spiritual. Because in the Old Testament, they physically had to lay hands and bless you. Ah, that's why oh, Jacob snuck in, oh, smelling like his brother. Oh, and his father, Isaac, blessed him. Why? Because it had to be physically transferred. How can this blessing come upon us if Abraham no longer lives on earth? It is a spiritual, somebody say spiritual, spiritual transaction. Faith is spent and the power of that blessing comes on your life. Hallelujah. Somebody say, let's make that move today. Let's make that transaction today. Let's make that exchange today as we receive from heaven's realms in our life. Hallelujah. You see, many, I think many of us grew up with heaven was a place that we were going to go when we died. Amen? But Jesus refused that. Not saying that heaven is not there and heaven doesn't exist. I'm not saying that because Jesus didn't say that. He said, I'm going to my father. Uh -huh. But he said some things that made you understand that you don't have to wait to see heaven. No, when Lazarus was at the tomb, they said, oh, I know he'll rise again at the day of resurrection. Guess what that was? That was Christian faith now waiting for Jesus to come get him. Come on, Martha, Martha. Martha, Martha, where are you at, Martha, Martha? I'm, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection. Jesus was saying, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about when you make heaven. I'm talking about when heaven is made in your life. I'm talking about when heaven comes down and begins to remove tumors out of your body. I'm talking about when heaven comes down and starts changing locations, numbers and digits in your life. I'm talking about when heaven begins to arrive. We're talking about the here and now. Some of us have already settled the now, then, and later. Hello? Somebody say later. We've settled that. Have we settled it? No doubt we are making heaven. Hallelujah. I said no doubt we are making heaven. But we need to make heaven now. I said we're making heaven now. And this is an understanding that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Because that law is not in heaven. That curse is not in heaven. Neither is that law. Hello. Hello. So redemption is not heaven. Redemption is now. I said, redemption is now. I said, redemption is now. <sighs> How many times are you going to pay for your car when you went to the bank and they said it's paid off? Somebody should receive that. <laughs> Trust me, I know, I know a lot of things that the Lord has done in people's lives. Just like that. Went to pay for the car. They said, oh, we don't know what happened. But somebody came in and paid the thing. <laughs> Hello? But it would be ignorant to continue to pay when it was already paid. Hello? You went to pay your house. They sent you the money back. They said, no, somebody already took care of this. We don't understand. But 30 years have been wiped. Would you continue to send your monthly mortgage in when it was wiped? When it was redeemed? Hello? When it was redeemed? Would you continue to send it in and say, well, I feel bad. Because I feel like I owe this debt. Come on, somebody. I feel like I owe this. You know, I don't know. I, I'm not worthy of this, so I should stay sick because I need to learn something. Uh, I, 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 should, I should continue in poverty because I need to learn something. Uh, you would run out that bank and say, hey, Jesus. Glory. You know what done, done for you, right? Paid the car. Psh, ah, hallelujah. Many of you, glory to God. But it would be ignorant to continue to pay a debt that was already paid. 
it would be foolishness on your behalf to continue to live a lifestyle of visiting that bank every month on the 5th saying, here's your money. Hello? Hello? Wouldn't that be ignorant? I'm asking a question. Wouldn't it be ignorant? Uh -huh. It would be ignorant. Do we all agree? And wouldn't you celebrate when they said it's paid off? You know what they're telling you? Somebody redeemed it. Somebody took care of it. Somebody canceled it. It's already settled on your behalf. Why are you trying to consider, continue to settle things that have already been settled? Hello? The only reason we do that is because of lack of knowledge or ignorance of what we don't know. When we don't know something, we continue in that thing. Hello? 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 Somebody say, I changed today. I grow today. I allow revelation to come on my life. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse, he told us how. He became that curse. Amen? When he became that curse, something transpired. What was on his life was now in exchange for what was on our life. Are you listening? Whatever was on your life from the beginning of time of when sin began, when you say, Jesus, you are my Lord, you now move into a realm that a transaction was already done on your behalf 2,000 years ago. Amen? Hallelujah. It's no different when you took your first breath. Every sin in this world from the beginning of time was already in your life, whether huh, you were participating in it or not. Hello? Because man was cursed from the beginning. Why? Because man sinned. Amen? And God dealt with the sin issue by sending his only begotten son to become a curse. Why? Hey, so that there can be a spiritual transaction that took place in a realm that you don't see. This is why the Bible says, if I be lifted up, uh -huh. ah, I will draw all men unto me. What was he saying? Uh -huh. If you lift me up between heaven and earth, there is a transaction about to be made in a realm that is not on earth, but not in heaven. It's a transaction between places. Uh -huh. Oh, you see, when money is sent, it has to leave and arrive. That means there's a sender and a receiver, and they have to cross paths. Ooh. Oh, y'all ain't heard me now. Just because you sent it doesn't mean it has arrived. The moment you send it is a transaction, and there's an intersection of transaction, and that's what the cross is. The cross is an intersection of transaction between heaven and earth. The curse and the blessing had to be ah, oh, a center point of transaction. Hallelujah. This is why we come to the Lord Jesus. Amen. So that when we believe in him, what he did for us, we can now receive it. Somebody shout, I receive it. Hallelujah. And as we enter the word of God, we began to learn and understand and receive deeper realms of what that transaction was about. Amen? Coming to church does not make us uh, to be more religious. That's, that's not the point of this, the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is to bring you into deeper realms of spiritual knowledge. Amen. So you know exactly what's paid for in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The more you come into that realm of supernatural wisdom and knowledge, the more you receive, the greater your life is. Huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I always tell the story that I used to get sick every year. Every year. Sick, sick, sick. Sick. I'd call in. Oh, I can't make it today. Yeah. So I used all my sick leave all the time. And then there was a day I just got tired of sick leave. Like, God, surely this is not my story. And I began to understand to get the scriptures because the scripture was the answer to my ignorance. Hello? I said the word of God was the ignorance or the, or the, or the answer to my personal ignorance. Are you with me? And then I made up my mind. I refuse to be sick. I enjoy not having sickness. I enjoy not coughing 
not sneezing, not choking, uh, not, you know. Some of y'all know. Yeah. I enjoy not waking up miserable in the morning. Hello? Hello? And I started noticing when I started putting pressure on that enemy, that enemy started fighting. I said, oh, it is an enemy. Because surely when I put pressure and I found that there was a battle, somebody must be on the other side of that thing. Uh, and then I realized that I needed to wake up to spiritual concepts and spiritual understanding that there was a war that I needed to wage with the word against the enemy. Amen. So I started saying I'll never be sick another day in my life. I started declaring I refuse to be sick. Even when I was sneezing, a chew, I said, not my story. Uh, even when I had to go with a headache, ah, not my life. Eh? And I just continued to battle and battle and battle and battle and not say, oh, this is just the way it is. We go through ups and downs. I said, no, not my story. I refuse to be sick another day in my life. Some, I can't hear nobody. Uh, some of y'all like to pay for doctors, huh? I like to be a blessing to the kingdom. Hallelujah. I'm going to say something, man of God. People won't say nothing about a doctor driving a Ferrari. And yet he used your money. But your pastor, oh my God. Don't worry, it's coming. But your doctor, you'll be like, ooh, look, we should be a doctor. No, you should be a woman of God. You should be a man of God. You should be a spiritual fire. I know it's good. It messes, messes up with people's mindsets. Yeah, because we were happy to go see the doctor in this Porsche. And then we went Sunday morning to church and we were sad when they said, bring an offering. It's crazy you don't have offering insurance. Let me, let me talk to someone. It's crazy you don't have offering insurance. Where when God wants something, you don't have enough to give it, you call the insurance company. Oh, yeah, I'm a shkubrekata. Yetulokota laba rekata. But every job you get, they offer doctors getting paid from your insurance. God bless them all. Amen. Nothing against them. They're doing their job. But you should give them less work. Because you've been redeemed. Somebody shout, I've been redeemed. I've been empowered oh, that I'll never be sick another day in my life. Somebody said that's my word of confession the rest of my life. And what I believe by faith, according to the word of God, I can put my hand on it. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody said that's my story. I put my hand on healing on wholeness, on fulfilling the word of God, that I'm healed and I'm healthy and I'm whole in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. See, some of these things shouldn't make you nervous. They should make you happy. They should show that you have an answer in the word of God, not to live according to this society. Did Jesus live according to this society? My question is, what doctor did Jesus see? Okay. But you say he's Jesus. But let me give you a word. He's actually your elder brother. So if he's your elder brother, you're of the same bloodline. And what isn't in Christ should not be in you. Somebody say it's not in me. He's redeemed me. He's bought me back from the curse. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody's receiving something. Amen. Amen. I heard a friend of mine call me today. He's like, you know, they have a, a pastor friend. They diagnosed his wife with cancer, and he's freaking out. He said, then I told him y'all's testimony. I said, really, brother? He said, I did. He said, I know a man of God. They told his wife, he got four months to live. She said, huh? I already died. Uh, that's a woman of God. He said, and nobody knew because their faith was not shaken. Nobody knew in 2012 there was a death sentence given by a doctor. Nobody knew. Hallelujah. 
Somebody say God, God. is God. And his word is his word. I'm responsible to believe his word. I shall see his word. Hallelujah. So yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Amen. So we, we don't live by the law of the Levitical, you know, assigned laws that were given in the first five books. Amen. Even all the way through Deuteronomy. We don't live by those laws. Because God summed up the laws in one thing. Jesus said, love your, remember, what are the greatest commandments? He said, love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, uh Anybody love the Lord? Anybody love the Lord? So we got that right. Love the Lord and then love yourself. And then love your neighbor. Love everybody. But number one is who? Okay. You love the Lord and you can love everybody. So Jesus summed it up in one. Really, all of those. He said, just love your neighbor. Amen. He summed all of those things up in one. Love your neighbor. My question is, do you pray for your neighbor? I got to tell you, don't answer. <laughs> don't, you don't lie. You're in the house of God. But if you love your neighbor, you're actually praying for them. You're actually praying that God touch their life. God deliver their life. Amen. So, so, so the reality is when we love people, we're always praying for them to come to a revelation of the word of God or the life of God. Somebody say, I'm praying now. I'm showing my love for all of my neighbors. And I'm praying for them to be free. Hallelujah. Praying for them to be delivered. Amen. Because he's saying to us, it is that one law that we actually live by. Amen? 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 That one law is loving everyone around you. How do you love everyone around you? How? Prayer. Praying for them. Speaking to them about God. Helping them when they're down. Uh-huh. Seeing them go through something. Don't pat them on the back only. That's not love. Hello, don't pat them on the back only. Do something. Pray for them. Cast it off of them. Give them the word. Amen. That's what love does. I said that's what love does. Don't beat people down. Lift them up with the word of God. Tell them, look, the Bible says this for you. eh? You're like, oh, I'm having a bad day. It's all right. Don't worry. This bad day is over because I'm here. I just help somebody. Don't fight and argue with your husband and wife. You know, and call each other names. Give each other the word. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. By doing that, you're fulfilling the law of love. Eh? And, and what you're actually accessing is this right here. Somebody say this right here. That the curse of the law is removed off of you. There are many Christians still under the curse because they don't know how to love. They don't know how to love. Somebody say, I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm receiving right now revelation on how to love. So there are many Christians still fighting the curse because they don't know how to love or they don't know what love is. You invited somebody here, it's because you love them. Listen, even if they don't come back or they don't like you or they think you're crazy, that's okay. You show them love by bringing them to the feet of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The rest is up to them. Anytime you meet people on the street and you tell them about the Lord, that's because you love them. That is actually fulfilling the law of Christ. Hallelujah. And by doing so, you're actually actually removing any availability of the curse over your life. Oh, my. Let me help you. God, I want to help you. So many Christians are fighting entries of the enemy in their life. Eh? Not challenges where God allows you to strengthen your faith. Eh? I'm talking about entries, entryways, because windows and gates and doors are open. Why? Love is what actually closes that door. Hello? Are you listening? Because there are differences between Jesus' faith being tested in the wilderness because everybody has to go through the testing and trying. Amen? But I'm talking about 
stupid, ignorant attacks of the enemy because our windows and doors are wide open. And the only thing that closes them is love. Uh, I said love. Somebody say true love. True love. True love. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it says here, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How? Having become a curse. So he actually became the curse for our sake. And what's amazing is when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, that that was upon Jesus called the blessing is now in transaction to you. It is upon your life today. It is actually in your spiritual bank account. When you look at your bank account in heaven, it says, uh, Craig the blessed. Hey. Yes, sir. That, that's what's on your spiritual bank account in heaven. Amen. So anytime, anytime, anywhere, that thing can rain on you. Hey. I said it can rain on you. You go somewhere and it just starts raining on you. Like, ah, that's the blessing of God. Amen. You walked in. You thought you were going to have to pay this. And you didn't pay that. You thought the outcome was going to be this way. That was the blessing raining on your life. Hallelujah. So how you walk in love, not only with God, but with your brothers, eh? with your neighbors, is actually allowing the cloud of blessing to pour out on you. You'll bypass many troubles and many struggles because the blessing of the Lord will reign on your life. God will not be mocked. He said, I will open up windows in heaven and pour out, pour out my blessing upon your life. That means it follows you like a cloud. Uh -huh. I said, it follows you like a cloud everywhere you go. Amen. Whether that blessing looks like favor. Amen then it's the blessing. Don't let the cloud of curse follow you because you have hatred towards your brother. Hallelujah. You don't like a preacher. Amen. It's crazy I have to say that today, but it's true. A lot of people don't like a preacher. Well, guess what? You, you're inviting the curse to follow your life. People don't understand. He said, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets, no harm. Why? Because you, you, you invite that curse to come upon your life. Many people are struggling because they put their mouth on a preacher. I want to help you. Because we, we have lost spiritual concepts. Everything is carnal. So we can talk about anybody we want to talk about. Ah, and then pow, stuff happens. You say, God did it. No, God didn't do it. <laughs> I heard somebody help me preach. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Yeah, he said, choose this day whom you shall serve. And then he said, choose this day. You want blessing or cursing, life or death? It's in your mouth. So when you're speaking of things that you don't know about, it's best to be quiet. Somebody say, it's best to be quiet. Because what you're doing is opening avenues for that curse to begin to follow you like a cloud. Huh? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I don't care how you don't like a preacher. Just smile. Glory to God. Say, Lord, that's your problem, not mine. Hallelujah. 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 So the, the, the Christ has redeemed us. Somebody say redeemed. I want to I want to just touch this word redeemed because this word is in two segments really to redeem is to uh, to pay a price to recover. So to recover, eh? Mm -hmm. So in other words I, 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 I'm not talking about nobody in here, but I've seen it in times past where people's vehicles have been repoed. Eh? They couldn't pay. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> nobody in here. <laughs> but the car went driving away and you weren't in it. <laughs> I was preaching somewhere. I think it was in Kalinga. And the Lord showed me a vision. <laughs> and I saw this vision of a car being repoed. I said, Lord, somebody call back repoed. He said, call it out. You were there? I said, call it out. He called it out. The lady said, it's my car. I said, well, praise God. The Lord bring one to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> so when, they, when they take something, <laughs> they actually put all kinds of charges now before you can ever redeem it. So there's extra payments that have to be paid. There are penalties and fees that have to be paid now on top of the actual price of the car. See, that's what sin does. Eh? I'm not talking about sin causing you to repo, but it puts extra payments and taxes your life. 
Oh, oh, hello. I said it taxes your life. It puts penalties. It puts extra payments on your life that become burdensome and hard to carry. Amen? Amen? Somebody say, I, I, I renounce all sin in my life. Every day, even today, I renounce all sin in my life. So to redeem by payment of a price to recover from the power of another, to ransom, to buy off. So when Jesus came and died on that cross, he was actually the payment to hell. Satan needed to be paid because somebody sinned. And the price and penalty of sin was death. And that death was not just physical. It was also eternal death. Somebody say eternal death. So, so somebody had to pay the price of natural death and spiritual death, which was uh, a payment to hell. Somebody say a payment to hell. You don't want to bank there. Hallelujah. <laughs> I said you don't want to bank there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So somebody had to pay that price. And this is where Jesus steps in, and he is the only begotten son of the Father who is now the payment not only for natural death, but spiritual death, which ended in hell. This is why the people that don't believe that Jesus went to hell, you never got the full payment. Hello? I said people who don't believe that Jesus didn't go to hell. Somebody say he went to hell. Because God paid the full price. Uh, he didn't leave any change behind. I said he didn't leave any change. There was no pennies left when the payment was made. Eh? Are you with me? So that means Jesus had to go into hell. Somebody say he went to hell. When he went to hell, that was the full price that needed to be paid to redeem all mankind. Somebody say that's my story. I've been redeemed. So it's a price to recover from the power of another. So Satan, the Bible says the whole world lies in the wicked one. Why? Because Adam gave it to him. When Adam sinned, he gave him the entire world. Amen? And everything in the world was given to Satan. Eh? Hallelujah. But the Bible says we've been redeemed. I said we've been redeemed. Now that you're redeemed, eh, it actually belongs to you. Let me talk to somebody that's hearing what I'm saying. It belongs to you. The earth belongs to you. Everything in the earth now belongs to you. Why? Because you are the rightful owner from the beginning. Amen. See, Satan became a squatter. <laughs> he just took up space that nobody was living. Y'all, let me talk over here. Somebody from California heard me, right? Somebody from California heard me. Huh? He just moved into an empty space and he said, this is my space and I'm not leaving. Eh? And as much as the homeowner wanted to whine and, you know, cry about it, he said, I'm not leaving. This is my house. Huh? Why? Because that's the way Satan works. Huh? He takes space that nobody lives in. So now there was a vacuum when Adam sinned and there was now an empty space and he moved into that space and he said it's mine because man was not found there anymore. Hallelujah. But now Jesus Christ came and when he came, he took the keys of death, hell and the grave away from him. And then he gave us the keys to the kingdom. That meaning that everything from heaven to earth actually belongs to you and me. Oh, I want to go there. I don't know if you're going to let me go there. So it's not just earthly dimensions. It's not just earthly situations or earthly things. It's actually heavenly things and earthly things belong to you because you are the rightful owner to everything that God ever created from the beginning of time. Oh. God did not come here with his only begotten son to bring people to religion. He actually brought them back to the place even before Adam was born. Hallelujah. Or created. Are you listening? Took us beyond the creation of Adam. Amen. He redeemed us back to the father before there was Adam. Hallelujah. Somebody say redemption. Being bought back. Being bought back. So not only are you bought back, but you are made new. Somebody say made new. Made new. 
So you're bought back, but you're also made brand new. That's why the Bible says you are a new creature, a new type of being. You are a new species of being. So you're not the old one revamped or revived. You're actually removed and a new you is actually put there. Hallelujah. This is what separates you from Adam. This is why the Bible says you are born again. You, you, that means you're born before Adam was ever born because it cancels out all of darkness and all of sickness in your life. All you need to do is begin to believe God for who he says you are. Come on, man of God. Hallelujah. You are not without power. You are not without authority. The only thing we lack is revelation of truth. Somebody say, I'm captured mine tonight. See, you can go through life bumps and bumps and bumps and sicknesses and turmoil and all these things. Eh? And none of those things build your faith. Hallelujah. But the word of God entering your heart, coming alive, eh, will conquer every challenge. I said, you'll conquer every challenge. Hallelujah. Let me finish the story. So I woke up one year and I told my wife. Did you notice that I wasn't sick all last year? She's like, ah. I said, did you notice that the flu came and went <laughs> and it never entered the house? Did you notice that everybody was sniffling and sneezing and we were just partying along? <laughs> Glory. And nothing entered our life. I said, that's your story. I said, that's your story. Some people said, that's impossible. Oh, wait a minute. All things are so what you going to say now? What you going to Oh, that's impossible. Huh? All things are possible to him that believes the word of God. See, because if Jesus is my uh, realm of understanding of what my life should be like, and I ask myself, where was Jesus sick? You say, oh, but he was the son of God. Then who are you? I know a religious Christian. That's, that's what they made us to be. Somebody said, not my story. No, 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 because either we're adopted or we're not. Either we're brought in the family or we're just a group of people trying to believe in a God. Oh, no. Somebody say, I'm, I'm a, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody I heard somebody say, this man's crazy. No, I read my Bible. I read my Bible. You should read your Bible. I'm talking to somebody out there. You read your Bible, you'll realize that Jesus gave birth to sons of God. Not Christians. Not churchgoers. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He didn't redeem a fallen man into a position. He removed a man and made a new one. That's everything your Bible says. We just been too weak to tell you that. Not this guy, but other guys. They've been too weak to tell you. That he didn't redeem a fallen man. He actually removed a fallen man and made a new one. You, a God, somebody's a preacher right there. He made a God man. In the image of him again. Hello. Somebody say we are God men. Because either you're saved or you're not saved. Either you're born of God or you're not. Hello. 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 And if you're born of God. My, if your dog had puppies, would you call them cats? I mean, maybe you would in this society. You might call them furries. Who knows what you call them? I mean, we got to wait a little while till they figure out what they are. You know, that's what they tell us today, you know. <laughs> but if my cow had a cow, it would be called a calf, which is actually the offspring of a cow. So if God... <laughs> has children, then what are those children? God's. Because if a dog has a dog and a cat has a cat and a horse has a horse, what does a God birth? God. Then why are we trying to be just religious, redeemed people? Give it up, man. God. Come on. Because this is as far as they ever allowed us to go in understanding. Because anything else is crazy. But it's actually your Bible. Hello, it's your Bible. 
Hello, it's your Bible. Hello, it's your Bible. Hello, it's your Bible. If you're born of God, anybody born of God? Uh, so when you were redeemed, you were actually done away with and a new you was designed. Hello. The only thing that is the same is the body he stuffed you back in. <laughs> so there was a transaction when you said yes to the Lord. Just like there was a transaction at the cross between the curse and the blessing. When you said yes to Jesus, there was actually a transaction between the old dead uh, messed up you to a brand new person who never, watch this, who never existed before. And the only thing we go by is experiences in the soul of man. Oh, y'all going to take me out tonight, deep, deep water. So, so when, we, when we say yes to the Lord, uh -huh, uh -huh, and a transaction has taken place, we are now new creatures. That redemption threw away the old you. And a new you was breathed in there. And the only issue is the CPU. You know what I mean? That's the processing unit that says, well, you see, that's unbelievable. <laughs> Hallelujah. That CPU needs to go back to intimacy. So now you can see into him to see you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It's real simple mathematics. As long as you don't have emotions in the way. Feelings don't work with math. Have you ever tried to do math with feelings? Hello? You ever try to do four plus four? Woo. If I cry, it'll go to nine? Don't work. No matter how you add the math up, it's still the same. With tears, without tears. With anger or without anger, it's still math. Eh? The Bible is the Bible. With emotion or no emotion, with feeling or no feeling, it is the word of God. And you can have it. Or you can cry about it. I don't know. But it doesn't change it. He redeemed you and made you brand new. Brand new. Somebody say brand new. Brand new. That means he didn't even restore the old. Uh -uh. <laughs> he said, look, the old you. No. New you. Hello. Hello. Somebody say, I'm a new me. I'm a new me. I'm a new me. <laughs> I'm having new encounters with God, new experiences in his word. I can't depend on the old man's thinking. I have to find the word of God and believe the word. Hallelujah. Live this word. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout glory. glory. You see, this is the place when you have this, this, this realm of revelation and understanding, then all things become possible. Eh? Because you're not working out of the old person anymore. Hello? That's all the Bible says. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind now. Why? Because that old mindset is telling you you're still the person you were. But when you have a born again experience with God, uh, that old man is still there in this. But the new man is you. Somebody say, I'm brand new. So there's a payment of price to recover from the power of another, to ransom, to buy off. Amen? Mm -hmm. So to buy up. To buy up for oneself or for one's use. So the Lord bought you for his use. Amen. He bought you for his pleasure. Amen. What brings God pleasure is your faith in him. Hallelujah. How do you please God? The Bible says faith is what pleases God. So every time you activate and move by faith, you are actually allowing God to laugh. Hallelujah. You're like, hey, that's my boy. That's my boy right there. Hallelujah. Every time you release faith, God's like, glory to God. Hey, wait, that's, yeah. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say release faith. release faith. Live by faith. Walk in faith. Release faith. Tell yourself, I'll never be sick another day in my life. I have been redeemed. I've been bought back. I'm not under the curse. The blessing of the Lord is upon my life. And it is moving through my body. It's moving through my mind. It's moving through my family. The blessing of the Father is upon my life. Hallelujah. So it's to make wise 
and sacred use of every opportunity for doing good. So he redeemed you for doing good. Amen. Somebody say doing good. Jesus went about doing good, healing all those oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Amen. So it is to release. A release. Somebody shout a release. Somebody say liberate by payment of a ransom. Eh? So if somebody ever gets taken for ransom or, you know, they, they do this thing now where they lock up your company or your business or whatever and they want a ransom on the Internet, you know. Y'all ain't heard about that? Okay, just make sure we're on the same planet. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so they, they hijack things and they take and they want a ransom. Why? That ransom is to get them to release what is valuable. Amen? So somebody has to take something of equal or lesser value and transfer it to something greater value. Amen? Hallelujah. So there has to be a redemption. Somebody say redemption. Somebody say liberation by payment of ransom. So Jesus was the payment of ransom for our liberation. What were you liberated from? Somebody say the curse. The curse is what you were liberated from. Amen? So any area that is not working in your life is called the curse. Hello? Somebody say the curse. So anything that is not working in your life is still under the curse. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody didn't want to say amen. Because if we don't identify it, we don't see what's going on. Hello? If you don't see what's going on, you can never deal with it. If you always leave it in the closet, it'll always collect dust and stay in control of your life. Are you listening to me? And then we'll, we'll carry that generationally and say, oh, that's just the way it is. Huh? Somebody say, not my story. My life is different. Uh, what he paid for me, I'm going to give him that value of what he bought. Hallelujah. You never want to go to the store and buy something. Hey. And then when you come out, it's worth a whole lot less than when you bought it. That's not your story. Uh, you're worth a whole lot more than what the Lord paid for you. Hallelujah. I said you're worth a whole lot more than what the Lord paid for you. Amen. And you're living up to that value. Amen. You're living up to that lifestyle. Amen. You're not living under the curse in any mindset. Hallelujah. You're living up to the value and beyond. Amen. So to release or, or, or to redeem or to liberate by payment of ransom, to cause to be released. Somebody say be released. This is interesting that the Bible says it is the truth that releases you. Uh -huh. It's the truth that makes free. It's the truth that releases you. Once you receive truth in an area, you are now being released. Hallelujah. Somebody say the truth of the word <laughs> releases my life, releases my life releases my understanding releases my relationship with the lord amen somebody's going deeper tonight hallelujah to deliver somebody say to deliver so to be redeemed is to also to deliver are you listening so when we don't talk about deliverance in the house of god we are leaving redemption hello we need to be made free amen and what is deliverance it's an area where the enemy has a foothold in your life Wherever the enemy has a foothold or a stronghold and he's holding your life down, that is where the curse is entering. Amen? Or that is what the curse is hanging in there. So that has to be delivered. Somebody say delivered. delivered. So it says to deliver from evils of every kind, internal and external. That's in your Bible. That's, that's in your Bible. Huh? So to be redeemed is also meaning to be delivered. Internally and externally. Amen? Amen? Because there are things that will hold your life externally. Amen? You don't even know they exist. Uh, you can't feel them. You don't experience them. They don't, they don't choke you. They don't, they don't make you cry. They just make your life harsh. Hallelujah? Those are out there. Those are external. Amen? You don't even feel it. You just know something's wrong. Something's not going on. Something's not happening. Hallelujah. Somebody say be delivered. Somebody say be free. So the Lord paid the price. Amen. Somebody say I'm redeemed. Mm -hmm. I'm redeemed. 
I'm redeemed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's look at 1 Peter real quick, and then we're going to pray. Hallelujah. I was going to read you Deuteronomy 28, but we'll see if I get there tonight. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 1. Mm. Glory to God. Are you receiving something tonight? So you don't have to accept everything in your life. Amen. Don't accept everything just because, you know, your family went through it. Maybe you didn't have a dad, a mom, whatever. I mean, you, we could say all kinds of stuff. Amen. The, the Bible says don't think your plight is not common. Hello. Don't think what you're going through is only you going through it. That is a lie of hell. To say I'm the only one in this. No, no, no. There have been thousands. There's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> what you're going through, somebody else has already gone through. And there are many others going through. But God has already answered that plight. Hallelujah. I said the Lord has already answered that plight. Somebody reach up and take it now. Somebody reach up and take it now. I said reach up and take it now. God has already answered your situation. I receive it right now. I receive that answer right now. I receive that deliverance right now. I receive that empowerment right now. Hallelujah. Glory. First Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Therefore gird up the loins of your what? Mind. Uh-huh. I can say that another way, but we'll let you read it. <laughs> it means tighten things up on your mind. Don't let your mind wander. Don't, don't sit there and think, ah, I'm sick. Nothing's working. Bad. That, that has, that, you're going totally against the word of God. It says gird it up. That means tighten it up. Don't let your mind go wandering. Be single-minded. Be focused on the things of God. Be focused on the word of God. That's how you start breaking the curse, eh? Is that you don't allow your mind to say, nobody loves me. What? And you're a believer? For God so loved the world, and nobody loves me. Somebody say, not my story. I know the Lord loves me. And I know the body of Christ loves me. Hallelujah. And let me help somebody because love ain't a feeling either. I said love ain't a feeling. I don't care how many country songs or rap songs or other songs talk about love is a feeling. Nah, nah, baby. Ain't no feeling. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is love. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Uh, that means have control over your mind. That's what the Bible says. Don't be drunk with wine. Why? Because you lose control of your mind. Come on now. Don't, don't act like you've been saved all your life. Some of y'all used to dance in this club. This used to be a bar. Some of y'all. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, when it used to be a club, people would be dancing. People come to church, they're like. I don't want nobody to see me. <laughs> y'all know how it was. Yeah, well, like, I want everybody to see me. You go to church, you're like, I don't want nobody to see me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Back in the day, you'd be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Let's get the party started. You come to church, you're like, shh, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> should give more to God than you gave to that life. Yeah. Hallelujah. You should shout louder than when you used to shout for that life. <laughs> You should dance. You should dance more to the kingdom of God. Y'all, don't make me go. Don't, I'm going to get y'all up here. We're going to bless. We might turn into a Spanish service real quick. Hey, watch out now. <laughs> Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Why? Keep control of your mind. That's why the Bible says focus on these things, things that are above, godly things, the word of God. Keep your mind on those things. As soon as your mind starts wondering, you've got to gird it. Uh -huh. If you don't tackle it, it's tackling you. Uh -huh. And this is how the curse begins to operate. Eh? You allow your mind to wander, you start getting out of love. Start being angry at everybody. You know, now, now your mind just went off into the doghouse. So everything went to the doghouse. Hello? You got to pull that back. Somebody say pull it back. Pull it back. <laughs> Take authority over your mind. Hallelujah. 
This is what the scripture is saying. And rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the what? Revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep going. Keep going. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves. Hello. Hello. Not conforming yourselves to the what? Former lusts as in your what? That means we were ignorant. Somebody say, not no more. <laughs> I know the truth and the truth makes me free. Hallelujah. Keep going. Verse 15 now. Mm -hmm. But as, as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in what? All your conduct. In all your conduct. Somebody say, in all your conduct. So don't look at this world in concept of Christianity and say we can live however because Peter refutes that. That means in your conduct, you know, it's... <laughs> It's not legalism to want to live holy. It's righteous working in you that you desire to live holy, that you hate sin, you hate wicked things, you don't desire none of that. That is actually righteousness working in your heart. Amen. Amen? So, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Hallelujah. And he says, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Amen. Amen. And you say, how can I be holy? It's simple. <laughs> Aren't you born of God? Is God not holy? So when you yield to the God you, but when you yield to the carnal you, that carnal you is not holy. Hey, listen, that, thank God for the blood. You're like, oh, Lord. Because, you know, you stub your toe. You're like, ay, 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 ay. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> look at y'all, look at y'all. Turn the light on, stop walking in darkness. <laughs> Kick your toe. <laughs> because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Amen. Somebody say we can and we are because we're born of God. Because you're born of God, amen, his holiness is in you. I said his holiness is in you. Somebody say it's in me. It's in my life. His holiness is in me. But that does not mean that we conduct ourselves like the world and call ourselves holy. That means the holiness in us changes our conduct. Somebody say, that's the word of God. It comes out of me. It changes me. It shifts my mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember, I think it was Charles Wesley. He was preaching in a place and there was a lady who came in. She was from the club, like the, one of them clubs right down the road. She came in. She gave her heart to the Lord. She gave, got saved. And he told, she told him, you know, I work, I work at the, uh, you know, the man club. <laughs> he said, okay. And she said, do I quit? He said, no, go back. Because if something has taken root in you, I don't have to tell you to leave. She came back two weeks later, said, I left. I couldn't handle it. My heart couldn't handle it. My heart couldn't handle it. My heart couldn't handle it. I, I couldn't live in that life. Somebody say, I knew me. Brand new. Inside out. It says, and if you call on the Father who is with partiality, without partiality, judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. Somebody say in fear. Somebody say in fear of the Lord. Knowing, knowing what? That you were not redeemed with corruptible things. Somebody say redeemed. So you weren't bought with silver and gold. Amen. You weren't bought with money. You were bought with blood. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. It says know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct. Received by the traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. Let me let me say something here. Back back up to the to the previous because it says, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received where by what? So there are many things we do that our fathers or the generation before us gave us, and we still do those things. Amen. And that's what the Lord redeems us from because we are a product of our environment. This is why we must change our environment. Hello? 
when you change on the inside and you become a new person, don't be ashamed that you desire to change everything around you. Don't let nobody tell you, well, what do you think? You're better than us? So, no, I'm just a new me. So I don't want to live like that. Are you listening? Don't, don't let people talk you down or talk you out of what is in your heart screaming to say, hey, don't live in this area or don't walk like it, don't talk like that. Don't th that is your heart. That is changing the outcome of your life. Uh, that's the first attacks that begin to come. Why did you move to, uh, over there? Why you going to that church? Were they y'all better than us? No. Come on, we heard it all. You know, we heard it all. You think you're smarter than us? You think you're better than us? Okay, I can tell you stories. Lord Jesus, but I'm not. Amen? But I knew my, my heart was telling me, do this, go this way, leave all this, exit from here, enter there. Are you listening? And even when everybody around my life that thought they knew my life told me, wow, you're just different. <laughs> yep. <laughs> because my inside came alive. If you don't follow through with that redemptive transformation, because you're listening to everybody else. You're denying what the Lord has done in you. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Are oh, you listening? Come on now. Let, let me help you because I feel like I need to touch this area. Come on, come on Your new life will offend many. Uh -huh. Hold on. I, I, talked to, I talked to one of the brothers. I said, it's interesting that when I used to go to the club, nobody in my family would tell me nothing. But as soon as I started coming to church, they said, what's the matter with you? Hold on, I used to be all this wrong, do all this wrong, and you never checked me. But now when I turn to do right, you check me. Hello? Hello? Something ain't right with that. Hello? Don't be ashamed at the transformation of the new man that has come out of you by the redemptive power of the blood of Jesus. Be excited that somebody looks at you and go, what? what? You don't hang out with us no more. How come you don't come around the fellas no more? You know we used to always hang out every Friday, Saturday. You know, we had our own little thing going. And it don't, it don't fit in your heart no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'll get your wife like mine. My friends came over. She came out. He's saved now. That's the woman of God. He's saved now. That's what, he said. That's what she said. I was like, oh. My friend said, what's wrong with your wife? I said, nothing. She good. She died. She went to hell almost, like this close to going to hell. Is she good now? <laughs> I said, you ain't going to party? And I said, nope. Uh, she said, I'm saved now. <laughs> they took off. <laughs> but can I tell you a story? Wasn't long after that, he took his GTO and wrapped it around a pole under the freeway and was in a coma for six months. The very man that came to my house when she said, he's saved now. Hallelujah. I had to go to the hospital and see him. I said, my God, he wrapped his 1967 GTO, wrapped it around a pole under the freeway, the concrete pillar, split the car in half. Hallelujah. Amen. So you never know when the Lord is saving you from something that the enemy has set you up for. Redemption power. Somebody say, I'm redeemed. Somebody say, I'm redeemed. Hallelujah. So, hey, where are we? Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, but uh, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. Amen. But with the what? The precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Somebody say thank you for the blood. So that blood redeemed you. It was, the, it was the price to be paid to take your name off the roll of hell. Amen. But now let's go further, amen? Because that, your name not being written in hell anymore on the roll call, also doesn't give the right to hell to make your life hell while you're here. 
Oh yeah, come on now somebody. Your name is off the roll of hell. So it has no real power to make your life on this earth while you serve a mighty God like hell on earth. Hallelujah. Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. And if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, it is written in heaven. And that means whatever heaven has, you have already signed for it. Hallelujah. What heaven has, you've already signed. When you said yes to Jesus, your name was written in his blood. And that was stating you are now sons of God. And what is in God, the Father, is also in you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same Holy Ghost that entered your life. If it had the power to raise Jesus from the pit of hell, cannot the same Holy Ghost raise your life right here on earth somebody say oh yes oh yes I have been redeemed if the Holy Ghost took Jesus out of hell what is my life hallelujah what is cancer what is heart disease what is diabetes what is broken banks eh what is poverty if hell was defeated by the Holy Ghost how much more in this life sorrow sadness depression name everything under the curse the power of the blood of Jesus has already redeemed your life from it somebody shout hallelujah sickness has no power over you I said sickness has no power poverty has no power defeat has no power oh my god i want to help somebody tonight come on put your hand over your heart say oh lord i hear your word i've been bought by the blood of jesus that blood redeemed my life from hell and i refuse to live like hell on earth sickness you have no power over me the blood of Jesus already defeated you poverty you spirit you have no place in my life the blessing of the Lord is in me is upon me and flows through my life oh Lord if there's any area that I have agreed with darkness I renounce that today oh Lord if any place I have agreed with sickness with disease with generational curses with poverty in my life with lack in my life oh Lord any area knowingly unknowingly willingly unwillingly if I have agreed with it tonight I renounce it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ somebody shout healing is mine deliverance is mine freedom liberation is mine spiritually and naturally it's mine he already paid for it I refuse to pay for what has already been paid for I dare somebody take it by faith right now. Faith is in the room. The Holy Ghost is in the room. Whatever you have need of has already been paid for. Somebody say it's already paid for. It's already paid for. He paid for it. It's already paid for. And that blood is good. It's already paid for.
but it was already paid for. Can you see it? Because if you can't see it, you got to hear it again. You need to hear it and hear it and hear it until you can see it. Somebody say it's paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Every sin, every sickness, every disease, every poverty in my life, anything that looks like the curse that came from hell, it doesn't belong in my life. It doesn't belong in my life. Not in my life. Not in my house. Not in my family. It doesn't belong. And tonight, I refuse to stay silent any longer. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say that breaks tonight. Every sickness, every disease, every yoke of poverty, it breaks off my life tonight. I take it by force. It's already mine. I cash it in. It's mine. It's already paid for. It's mine anyway. 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 It's already. I said my faith works I said my faith works my faith will never fail me I said my faith will never fail me I said my faith will never fail me come on somebody my faith will never fail my faith pleases God I have faith in God I have faith in his word I have faith in the work of the cross I have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ that has redeemed my life from destruction destruction shall not be my story the blessing of the Lord that is my story my story changes today no more destruction only elevation only increase only goodness of God in my life in my life only goodness God's goodness in my life every waking day the goodness of God is right there waiting to meet me every morning, every night. The goodness of my God shall never fail me. Oh yeah, give him praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, all it takes is an activation. Because you believe it's a touch. Because you believe it's a word. Because you believe it's an action. Hey, the Bible says that when Paul was preaching, he saw the man who was lame. The Bible says he saw that the man had faith. And he simply said to him, rise and walk. Why? Because he saw the man had faith in the word of God. Your faith will be shown in the realm of the spirit. Your, your faith is like hands waving at God. That's it. That's what your faith is like. Hey, here I am. Your faith is like, yeah, it's mine. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> your faith is like blind Bartimaeus saying, Don't pass me by. 
that's what your faith does it actually calls out to God and it says hey you're not passing me by my son will come back home uh -huh. my son will come back home my son will return uh -huh. that's for somebody right there I'm watching your son come back uh, six weeks from now you're gonna get that call things are gonna happen and it's gonna be a complete transformation I'm watching that take place in the realm oh I wish I can flow because when your faith starts waving actually things begin to move in the atmosphere hallelujah so your faith in God faith in what he has said begins to activate God you're waving at him saying here I believe that that's mine amen this is how miracles take place when she said I didn't care what people thought about me you think blind Bartimaeus cared he didn't care he wanted his eyes how bad do you want what God has for you how bad do, do you are you desperate for what God said belongs to you if you're not desperate that's not my fault you have to be hungry enough to believe and get out of the commonality of what you're used to the traditions of your fathers the traditions you have to break out amen you'll not receive unless you break out you have to break out whatever that breakout is for you okay? whatever that is for you can't do common things and think you're going to get an uncommon miracle hello everybody that was blind but blind Bartimaeus stayed blind except him he goes oh, hey, he received an uncommon miracle because he acted not like them saw him you would think he's not blind because he's like hey hey i'm just gonna go with what i hear i hear i don't see but i hear my eyes are over here hey don't pass me by i'm coming at you jesus uh, that, that's what activates the miraculous in your life is when you're reaching out beyond what is common in your life if you've always been quiet at some point you gotta shout because your miracle is in your shout if you're shy hey shyness will never encounter god desperation will when you believe that God has it for you you will break out this is why miracles are not common in the normal church because the normal church refuses to lose their dignity but everybody in the Bible lost their dignity the woman with the issue of blood she did not care she lost her dignity she went out among them which she could have died and she pressed in and received her miracle everything that is in the miraculous takes somebody breaking through because yeah. well, God already broke through to you but you have to break through uh, uh, what people think about me who cares <laughs> because when you get your testimony they're going to know <laughs> they're going to be like I remember <laughs> I remember when that woman of God jumped ah, I want mine and bam she received a miracle they might be laughing at you now, but they're going to be shouting for you later. Oh, yeah. But it's your miracle. It's your life. They don't live it. Have you ever asked yourself who lives your life? You go to sleep. You wake up. You see yourself in the mirror. Nobody else wakes up in that body. Nobody else goes to the pain in that body. Nobody else goes to the feelings of what's in that body. Only you don't live through other people. Are you here? When you get fed up and you're like, I don't care what people think about me. And that's when you're breaking through. Because nobody goes to sleep in your eyes and nobody wakes up but you nobody walks through that pain but you hello it's in your body your neighbor might not know it might not even feel it but you got it it's in you eh? their shout won't break you out but yours will uh, when you begin to move God begins to move I said when you begin to move God begins to move when you begin to go forward, God begins to go forward. When you begin to act, God begins to move. Hallelujah. 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 There are several things that activate miracles. Huh? It's light. 
sound and movement the word is the light the sound is what you make and the movement is what you do that activates the miraculous I just taught you something huh? yeah 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 light sound and movement activate the miraculous of God hallelujah hallelujah the, the, the word has already gone out the sound is up to you and the action is up to you but the light has already rise and shine for your light has come I believe my God somebody's getting a financial miracle this week I'm looking for five people five people that want to believe God come here fire yeah 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 fight natural miracles breaking out for you oh yes i command it right now in the name of jesus you say can you command it did not jesus speak to the tree the lord spoke to the tree he said no man eat from you this day he said oh yes watching financial miracles break open because you're tired and you sow your seed your light has come 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 it's up to you to make a sound it's up to you to make a move as you do as you do you see you see oh yeah take it take it take it take it take it take it Rekatakata, Rekitishkubaha, Etololoska, Bruskata, Etoloko Talabaye, Eoskata. You say, How can we get it? You get it by faith. He said, Peter, all you gotta do is go, go right there and pick that first fish. And out of that fish's mouth was a financial miracle. Who did it? God commanded it, Peter obeyed it, and that settled it. Hallelujah. I said God commanded it. Peter obeyed it. And that settled it. Are you with me? Somebody shout hallelujah. I command financial breakthrough. I command financial miracles to begin to take place. If God can cause a tumor to disappear. If God can cause cancer to disappear. If God can cause nodules to disappear. Where did they go? Then you ask where did the money come from? You see, if you can ask God, where did the tumor go? Then you can ask God, where did the money come from? Because the same God that can cause things to disappear is the same God that can manifest things for your life. Hallelujah. 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 Same God. Same God. It's the same power same power can cause you to be financially steady financially steady financially fulfilled financially steady father I thank you even now that you're putting the pieces together that need to come together to a man that has seen money show up uh, you, you can't you, you can't you can't change my mind I've already watched finances show up out of just just a phone call like hey uh, I just met you oh this is you see oh yeah you're, you're, you're listening to a man whose father prayed for food for another man and the food appeared in the truck 
it appeared it manifested see you're not talking to somebody that is guessing you're talking to somebody that has seen experienced and knows it is the word of god 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 already paid for wow Somebody say it's real. And it's really mine. I said it's real. And it's really mine. It's real. And it's really mine. It's real. Yes, it's real. And it's really mine. It's mine anyway. It's already paid for. Somebody say it's real. And it's really mine. shows up I don't care whether it's through an old business uh, back payment somebody owes you money you don't even know uh, I don't care if it comes to a supernatural bonus in your business your job it don't matter it, it doesn't it didn't it didn't matter how it comes I'm telling you it don't matter it didn't matter how it shows up in your life you're just gonna know God done did that God done did that I don't care if it is an insurance company that gives you back payments it don't matter it's real and it's really yours it's real and it's really yours Whew. somebody shout I receive now somebody say everything paid money flowing in my life like a river opportunities business deals bonuses supernatural favor just financial favor financial favor even with the bank account even with the bank even with the bank hey. <laughs> I remember I owed eight thousand dollars back taxes when I was 20 years old because I didn't know what I was signing when I was buying this house and the guy he did a, 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 a used car dealer deal you know and he took one thing and he put it on one paper and didn't put it on the other by the time that was over, I owed like $8,000 in back taxes. The Lord said, put the house up for sale. <laughs> you know who bought the house? Well, the people that sold me the house. You know, y'all yeah, heard me. Y'all yeah, heard me. You know who bought my house? Without a for sale sign, without a realtor. It wasn't even on the market. By faith, I took a sign and I walked to my living room and I said, Lord, you said sell the house. I sell the house. Because I don't know what to do. All I can do is what I see in the spirit. 
<laughs> and the same people that sold me the house, bought the house back, paid it completely off, and my back taxes. And I said, send me all the paperwork because I'm going to California. And that's exactly what happened. Huh? Are you listening? Bought the house. <laughs> Imagine they bought the whole house back. <laughs> hey, have you ever heard of a company buying a trailer house back after it's 10 years old? Hello? And then paying $8,000 on top of that old trailer house. Only God. Only God. Only God. Only God can do it for you. All he needs is your faith. We watch student loans being canceled, paid for. We watch, we watch, we we watch so many things financially take place. We're just pushing you to another level. I said, we're just pushing you to another level. Financial miracles. Yeah, pushing you to the next place. Ownership, ownership like you've never owned before. Yeah, ownership like you've never. Go ahead, take that. You go ahead. You caught that. I saw, I saw you caught it. I saw you caught it. See, they thought they broke you. They thought they destroyed you. They thought, they thought they burned you. But the reality is, all they did was throw you in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you're about to watch God raise you. They're about to watch God. They're going to be like, why? What happened here? One thing I know, my God will never be mocked. One thing I know, my God, my God, my Lord, my King will never be mocked. Financial breaking out, eh? Supernatural favor, eh? Supernatural favor. Supernatural favor. This is mine anyway. Somebody say it's mine anyway. May favor come upon you. 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 Come upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you, let me just let me just say. Some of you are going to marry into money, and some of yes. your money is going to marry you. <laughs> yes. No, we have too much to do for you to be broke. We have too many places to go for you to be broke. Uh, there are too many things to accomplish for you to stay broke, to be broke, to not have power. Somebody shout, Jesus, you're the Lord of my life. There's none without you. No, no one without you, Lord. Just you, just you, Jesus. I love you. I live for you. I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you everything. You are the Lord God. You are the Lord God. Jesus. Christ of Nazareth you are the Lord God there is no other you're the mighty God you are my provider you're my El Shaddai Elohim some of you are going to watch this week you're going to see a financial cap removed off your life some of you are going to watch this week your financial cap removed off your life I don't care if it comes by bonus power it doesn't matter how it shows up I don't care if your boss calls you in and says I, I, I don't even know why I'm doing this but I'm going to just you know uh -huh, bypass everybody else and give you this hey, I'm telling you favor is not fair favor is not fair favor is not fair watch this favor is not fair it's not fair favor ain't fair i said favor ain't fair go ahead receive yours favor ain't fair favor ain't fair see i have a word from a prophet and it's funny because he said there are, there are there are many of you in here i forget how many he called out he said i see millionaire y'all who was in that meeting <laughs> You know that word is working in your belly and it's working in your life. You know, I, I laugh, I laugh because I wasn't expecting to go this way.
But when my phone dinged and he said, man of God, how are you? I said, I knew something about to drop. I said, yay, prophet. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. I wasn't even going to talk about this. I received. Oh, yeah. I wasn't going to talk about Poverty is not a badge of honor. It's part of the curse. When you go read tonight, go home and read Deuteronomy 28, you'll find the blessing. And in the next phase, you'll find the curse. You'll find all kinds of sicknesses and infirmities and diseases and poverty and lack all in the curse. Somebody say, I'm redeemed. I'm free. I'm liberated. In the name of the Lord, I am free, 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 free. My God, my God. There are so many ways in which God can prosper your life. So many ways. Father, we pray their eyes being opened their eyes being enlightened to the word of the Lord that comes unto them saying show them the way there are many ways for God to prosper your life many ways he made you free liberated your soul liberated your life financial liberation is just kicking in I said financial liberation is just kicking in. Oh, it's just now kicking in. You're going to take your children on vacation with you. You're not going to need anybody else to go with you. You and your children are going to enjoy a vacation. Because favor will find you there. Favor will find you there. Favor will find you there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Financial favor. Financial favor will find you. Finding you now. It's finding you now. Every yoke of poverty is leaving your life. Every yoke of poverty, internally, externally, is loosing your soul by fire. Oh, that's coming out. If you didn't think poverty was a devil, what's coming out? Are oh, you listening? Poverty is a spirit not just a mentality it's a mentality backed up by a dominion a demonic dominion I curse every spirit of poverty active in your heart in your life wherever you are I curse you in the name of Jesus Christ you will lose God's people you will lose their mind you will lose their money you will lose their hearts every poverty spirit I command you, you lose their life today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Favor find you. Ooh. Financial favor find you. Financial favor find you. Financial favor find you. Financial favor. Uh -huh. I, I curse that thing. You lose her. Even from the traditions of your father's house. Come out! <laughs> the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
دیکھ تلاش کو فائنینشل فیور فائنڈ یو فائنینشل فیور فائنڈ یو فائنینشل فیور فائنڈ یو دا ہاؤس از دا فرسٹ بریک آؤٹ دا ہاؤس از دا فرسٹ بریک آؤٹ از دا بیگننگ اف مینی بریکنگ آؤٹ Somebody say hallelujah. Mashukataba, mashukataba. In the name of Jesus. He said I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. To prosper you. I have plans to prosper you. To prosper you to give you an expected hope and end. Mano shakana. Mano shakana. know the plans I have for you to prosper you in the name of the Lord in the name of the Lord in the name of the Lord there it goes there it goes now there it goes now there it goes now now Somebody say thank you Jesus. This is why he said keep your mind on him focus on him. there's so many transactions some of you don't understand it's okay you don't have to understand somebody else's transaction keep your mind on Jesus some transactions have nothing to do with you Shut up. 
my wife her life back. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, give him his life back. Oh Lord, I command a miracle. Sir, wake up! holy environment right now this is where transactions are being made souls are being won stories are being changed right here at this altar don't let common Christianity spoil your walk with God something more powerful something beyond sitting in a church building calling ourselves Christians hearing a guy tell us a story and our life doesn't change and we live in a false hope that's not my life that's not your life hey Abdusha She was in a car wreck, but the Lord saved her life, mighty. God of order. Yes. This right here, that's our apostles. They're not our friends. Amen. Never, never, never. Amen. When we honor that, I pull my miracle out of this man. Okay? I pull my house out of this man. I will live in a house. Wow. My own. Wow. So it's out of honoring wow. the men and women of God here. Wow. Amen. Wow. Okay. That's powerful. That's, that's, that's a revelation. True, it's true. Blind Bartimaeus pulled his eyes out of Jesus. 
It's a revelation. The woman with the issue of blood, she pulled her miracle out of Jesus. And one more thing. Powerful. I came to church. I sat there. I was that quiet woman he talks about. But until I started having church in my house, then things started happening. You know, my, we pray at my house now. And um, it, it's, it's, it's just, we can't just play church in here. We have to take it home. Yeah. Without that, you, you miss can't out. pull your You miss out on too many things. Amen. Too many good things that God wants to do. There's no need to suffer. There's no need to suffer. Mashua. Pick him, pick him, pick him. Pick him, pick him, pick him. Come on, just help him. Tola casa. Delegista. Recatara. Besta que le que esto. Let that power go through you. I know this is different for many people that come. I know it's different. <laughs> but was not Jesus different? Hello? They, could, they looked at Jesus like, who is this man? This is crazy. He's not like all the rest. Yeah, we, we get into common Christianity. It, 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 it affects our faith. That's why many people go to church. They have no faith. Somebody say, I have faith in God. I believe. What do you need? No matter what it looks like, the Lord is working. The Lord is moving. He's answering me right now. Somebody say it's happening. I said it's happening. I see it happening. I feel it happening. I know it's happening. Oh, I wish somebody knew right now. You knew. I can feel it happening right now. I feel it happening. Oh. Hey, now you can feel that faith moving in the atmosphere. I don't doubt you do what you say. I don't doubt you do what you say. I don't doubt you do what you say. I'm listening with my heart wide open. I don't doubt you do what you say. I don't doubt you do what you say. I don't doubt you do what you say. I'm listening with my heart wide open. I don't doubt you do what you say. I don't doubt you do what you say. I don't doubt you do what you say. Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus 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 Christ. In the mighty name
mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout liberation. It's mine. It's mine. Freedom is mine. It's been paid for. And I take it by force. I take it by force. Satan, you won't hold me back now. You can't hold me back. I know what's mine. And I command it out of your hands. You let it go. Let it go. It belongs to me. Oh, there's still miracles going on. Huh? I want to go, but there's miracles going on. I'm telling you, there's miracles going on. Believe God, there's miracles going on. I wish I could tell you some miracles in my own personal life. Huh? Listen, you. Listen, we don't do this stuff for show. If I don't obey God, sometimes people won't get free. And it's not a show. I have to obey God. Eh? That's why I tell you, focus on the Lord. Eh? poverty always fighting them when they go forward that devil brings them three places back they're about to have a major breakthrough and this devil are loose I render you powerless I paralyze you you will not fight you have no fight in you in the name of Jesus you will lose my son you will lose my son you will lose him you have no power He's redeemed by the blood, by the blood, by the blood. He's redeemed by the blood. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Somebody shout my freedom is important to me. And I'm not letting anybody take it. I'm not letting religion take my freedom. I'm not letting a society take away my freedom. The freedom that Jesus paid for is my freedom and I refuse to let this culture take away my freedom my joy my peace my prosperity in the glory of God it's mine it's already paid for it's already paid for and I'm gonna keep it Take it. It's mine Come anyway. on, Ashley, do take it. It's already it's paid for. for. It's mine anyway. It's already paid for. It's mine anyway. It's already okay, paid Okay, let's do that part. Take it. Come on, you got to take it. I take it. I take it. I take it right now. Take it. Man, you can take it. I take it right now. This is an act of faith. Yes. I take it right now. I take it right now. I take it right now. Not tomorrow. Take it right now. I take it. I take it. I take it right now. I take it. I take it. I take it right now. I take it right now. Yes. Come on, faith is now. I take it. 
If I put a hundred dollars in my hand and I tell you, you have a chance to take it and you don't move, you cannot take it. An act of faith is taken, man. Put your house, put your house in your hands, put your money in your hands, whatever, take it. What the devil stole, man, that you gave up, now you can take it back. I'm telling you, I took it back, my healing, I took it. I died, y'all. I'm right here. I took it, and even when the doctor said I had four or six months to live, I took it and I said, no, I'm not going to die. No, I'm not going to lose my family. I'm not going to lose my babies. I'm going to live to have my grandbabies. I'm going to live to the best church in the world. I'm going to live to preach the gospel. I'm going to teach people what I didn't do before. I'm going to teach my children what not to do. I'm going to teach my spiritual sons and daughters what not to do. I took it. I was like, no, I'm going to be the best. If I quit, they quit. I can't. And so I took it and I took it and I'm like, no, doctor, I know what you're saying, but I'm taking my healing because Jesus did it. If you don't do what we're teaching you here, what makes you think you're going to do it when you get in front of Jesus? If you can't do what I'm telling you to do by faith, what makes you think sitting there is going to get you what you're wanting? I'm not trying to help myself. I'm trying to help you what I have. So many people do not understand, oh, the church just does this. They just want your money. (laughs) Really? Come on. I don't need your money. Jesus don't need your money. Jesus is trying to get something to you. So the only way, if you can't even trust Jesus with him not being here, if you can't see him, he's using me and apostle as a vessel to get to you. I'm trying to teach you something. I'm not going to tickle your ears, church. Apostle's not going to tickle your ears. We want to get something to you. I don't need you. You don't need me. You need God. I'm his mouthpiece. Apostle's his mouthpiece. I live life, man. I'm living my best life now at 50 years old. I died. I had stage four cancer. If this is not proof to you, what makes you think anything about Jesus? Come on, I'm right here. I have my baby, I have my grandbaby now, man. And you know what? My grandbaby's gonna live the best life. He's gonna live better. My kids are going to live better than I did. My next grandbabies are going to live better. And if they're the only ones that are going to listen to me, then they're going to live the best life. My son, my children, my daughters, my spiritual sons and daughters. I'm not going to tickle your ears, church. I'm proof right here that God can restore. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said he is the only way. So if all you want is for Jesus to come down and try to say, well, come on, let's go to church and let me teach you some things. If you don't even believe the the vessel he put right here, it makes you think Jesus is going to come down from the heaven and teach you anything. You're not even receiving from the person I put in front of you. What makes you think? He don't need your money. I was right there too. I didn't have money. But I thank God that I can be a testimony to you. 
Oh, well, all this, you drive this, you drive that. You know what? Because my faith got me that. My faith is not going to get me a broken down car. My faith is not going to get me trash. My faith serves a big God. And I'm going to kick the devil in his face. And I'm going to live the best and I'm going to drive the best. I'm going to have everything I have. My next faith is to have a million dollar house. You know why? So all of us can rejoice, God. The next thing is you're all going to have a million dollar house because we're going to rejoice, God. I'm not going to live poverty just to make you feel good. Then how is that going up? Jesus died on the cross for you and what did you give him? Nothing. But people are so willing to put Jesus down. Oh, well, this and that. Oh, yeah. Well, you know how you're putting him down? When you put me down, you put him down. I have increased in my life, but my faith got me where I'm at. Because I trusted God for my healing. I trusted God for my family. I trusted God for my grandbaby. I trusted God here in this church. Because we weren't here before, but I said, I know what God can do. You didn't know where God took us. He brought us out of what? Where the devil was trying to take us. But you know what? Here I am today. And guess what? My sister's home to heaven. And that's what the, the, the blessing of it is. Because I have her seed right there. And that's my niece and she's here. I said, my God, Jesus. I said, my sister's praising Jesus. But I have her seed, and I have her grandbaby, and I have her son right there. That ministers to me. Because you know what? Greater is he that is in me. So to the hell, to all the people out there who are trying to put Jesus down through me. Because I say, you know what? Greater is he that is in me. So get thee behind me, Satan. It's only up from here, baby. The next place we get is going to be even bigger. So back up, devil, because guess what? We're going up here. Faith for life, church. It's on now. Let me tell you something. I'm excited because it's increased from here. It's increased from here. Because if your headship cannot testify in God's goodness, that is no headship. That's nobody I want to follow. I want to follow the increase. I want to follow those that seek after the heart of God. I want to follow going up, not going backwards. Really? No, we ain't going backwards. If you're lacking money, you better find out why you're lacking money. And it's not because you give it to the church. It's because you don't put it where you should. It's because you don't tithe and you don't sow. Oh, but pity me, but Jesus. No, 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 no. No, you got it all backwards. It's a principle. It's the principle of it. It's the principle of it, people of God. You're, you're having money problems. Let's find out where your money is going. I'm telling you. You don't have a house. What's going on? What, what happened with your house? You're living paycheck to paycheck. What are you doing? It's a financial thing. Understand that. It's because you put yourself there. Jesus beat it all on the cross and he did it is finished. And you know what? I've been there and I've done that. I've lived paycheck to paycheck. I've done that. I don't need nobody's money. You know what? It's the principle. Money came to me. You know why? Because I put the money where I should. Because I tithed and I offered. Simple. Don't come in here to critique the house of God. Shame on you. Walk out. I'm going to teach you some things here. You're here because you don't know. You're here because you need to learn from the things of God. That's why you're here. Not to do me a favor, because I don't need that. We don't need no favors. We need people that are here and ready for change. If you don't want change, you want to still live in the world? You want to go out there and pity party? You want to go out there and drink your beer and do your stuff and watch TVs that you shouldn't be watching? You know what? Go ahead. Go on there. But you'll look back at me and you'll say, man, I should have stayed. Yeah, you should have. I'm only giving you what I live. I'm not preaching to you to tickle years to put money in my pocket. I ain't doing, you ain't doing me a favor. I'm good. I'm only bringing something to you because I'm trying to teach you something. If you're tired of going around the same mountain, it's time for you to change. It's time for you to get real with God, church. Too many people put down the church, go to court, do all this stuff, put down Jesus. They put down Jesus because they don't know. But I'm not going to sit here and put down Jesus. He saved my life. He saved my life and he shed his blood for me. 
And he said that I, he will supply all my needs and he has proven it. So I'm not going to be here looking like mess because it'll make you feel better. As a matter of fact, as you persecute, I'm just elevating, baby, because it's only getting better from here. Because I'm going to be mightier and mightier and mightier because I'm going to glorify my Jesus. The same thing with you. I speak nothing but a blessing. And those of you that are joining online, it might be even laughing. It's okay. Shame on you, but I bless you. Show it on all ends everywhere. And I bless you because Jesus has a last laugh. It didn't that, isn't that what happened when Jesus, so he called, right? He, he, the devil put him on the cross and he thought he won. Well, guess what? The keys, let me teach you something. The keys that Jesus went to take away from Satan in hell, guess who gave, he gave the keys to? Ta-da! Who has the last laugh? So the people that are persecuting you and laughing at you, ta-da! I got the keys. That's how I do it. I walk real proud and Danny too. I go get myself something brand new. I said, well, you know. Okay, dad's already ready. I love you. I'm excited. I'm excited. But remember, Jesus is in you. And he said, he shall supply your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Raise your hands. I bless you. Come on, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we honor you and we glorify you. Father God, we say have your way in each and every one of our lives tonight. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are the only way, the truth, and the life. Father God, we honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, Lord, have your way tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, Lord. And we said, amen. Amen. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Amen. Amen.